So we're gonna have a very controversial blog post. Uh, some might like it, some might not like it, but we're gonna talk about two new characters coming to the game, that's right. Cersei and Icarus, or some people it's like, should we merge the names to be like Icarus? -y? I was thinking Sir Kiss as their name because Scopely's a circus. They're clowns over there. Makes sense to me. Very controversial. These characters have very significant arena buffs as well as dark dimension buffs. No word on exactly going to be how they're released, but inside of in-game notification, it mentions a new event campaign. And then also in the strike time video, uh, one of the tags for Cersei is the defiant tag. So probably one of the characters is going to be an event campaign character, which is my opinion is the most player friendly way of releasing characters. The other one's probably going to be strike pass or some other uh, not so great way of releasing characters, but we'll have to see. No word on that yet. Now we're playing the Scopely song. We're going to read the blog post uh, because there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Greetings, commanders. Decades ago, strike. Answer to call to protect Nexus Earth, but today we're meeting two new heroes whose sole purpose is to defend humanity. And after eternally grateful meeting and great, we got a first time mythic legendary talking about Omega Red to cover uh, the characters on the move which is basically uh, Misty is now going to be the 10% drop in the Blitz Orb. And then uh, White Tiger is going to be going into the Blitz Store. Smashing Blitzes. Oh, I can't even remember what they were. I think it was like Minerva and uh, She-Hulk. And events to heighten your roster abilities. I believe we're having the Payday event tonight. Just put out that. Sir. Sir. Kiss. I guess Circus, I don't know, Sakaris, I don't know. I like Circus though. 7,000 years ago, powerful extraterrestrial cosmic beings known as Celestials, genetically engineered a race of near mortal beings called Eternals. And I guess there's like a hundred Eternals. Uh, they just said that there's gonna be two for now, but they could always do more later. Uh, no word on that whatsoever. Eternals were gifted with fantastic powers and tasks with looking after the human race throughout the ages. Two of the most powerful of those Eternals were Circe and Icarus. Icarus, Icarus, I don't know. Just like their fellow Eternals, Cersei and Icarus were augmented by cosmic energy, which grants them superhuman, superhuman strength, agility, and durability. They're mystic, though. I just keep in mind they're mystic. By design, Eternals are capable of using small amounts of cosmic energy to grant themselves a special ability that differentiates them from each other. Uh, Cersei can manipulate and transform matter into different materials, while Icarus is gifted with flight and ability to protect powerful beings of cosmic energy. His eyes, not Superman. We're going to call him not Superman, maybe. Instead of Karis, we'll just call him not Superman. Cersei is an excellent controller who is constantly copying effects. This team is pretty much anti-Affinity Watch. Or this duo, rather. This duo is designed to be anti-Affinity Watch in Arena. And in the footage that they sh they shown, they were paired up with uh, Cloak or Dagger along with Silver Surfer. We're going to have to see how that plays out. Uh, copying from enemies and clearing negative effects from herself and allies... Her attacks either hit hard or receive the added benefit of an ally assist. Her eternal counterpart, Akaris, is a blaster whose health is one of the highest in Marvel Strike Force. Yeah, we saw crazy numbers on the test on the test footage, like 700 million damage, 700,000 health pools, crazy. And his focus and resistance stats are also impressive. But you know what? All new characters have bonkers stats, by the way. It's just this it seems to be the way it is. He's a strong blaster on his own, capable of punching holes through enemy teams. So to truly subject your enemies and the power of the Eternals, you want to combine Cersei and Icarus in battle together. Icarus and Cersei create an impressive duo as they each unlock powerful synergies across their abilities. They boost each other in health, armor, focus, and resistance. Yeah, it's crazy. In addition to calling to each other for assists, Cersei and Icarus are the first characters to receive bonuses specifically to Arena, which include ability bonuses and additional damage. And somebody on post says, oh boy! Here we go. They will sell us arena defensive specific teams only to sell us a solution to the problem they created. Rins are repeat. Infinite money glitch. It's trash. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, game, to quote Satan. Done. I don't know if they're going to do that, but that'd be, oh boy. Yeah, so they do have arena bonuses. Also, a lot of people are saying, okay, what are going to be the 13s for this character? No official word I've asked. Maybe I'll get an official answer. And I... 
there's always this possibility that it could be a brand new 13. And I don't know if this is possible or not, but on MSF GG for some time now, uh, so this is not new. There has been some in the data mines for a long time, for a very long time, several ones that have been in the data mines with art that haven't been allocated yet, like Superior Olympus Extract. And maybe because of the reference to mythology, that could be a possibility, but uh, I don't want to get excited about this because uh, it's not known at this time. Let's go and look at the kits. Uh, like I said, Hero, Cosmic, Mystic, Controller, Eternal. We're going to skip over to the passive first, and then we're going to work up because that's kind of how we understand how the kit. Now, both of the characters have this mechanic, which is a mechanic we've seen before on other characters. If this character's health is full at the start of a match, the first time this character drops below 40% health, clear all negative effects on the character and heal self for 60% of this character's max health. Both of them do that. On spawn, apply defense up for two turns to self and all eternal allies. And then he does offense up. So she gives defense up, he gives offense up. And then in arena or dark dimension, this gives it to everybody on the team. I'm glad that they're now specifying some of this because how passives work when they're stunned and not stunned is always wonky. On turn, if it's not stunned, gain defense up for two turns. And I believe he has offense up, but I got to go look because I can't remember. Uh, speed up and then choose one random enemy that has death proof. Keep in mind that this is kind of designed to be a counter to Infinity Watch. And so choose one enemy that has death proof. Clear the death proof on that enemy, then apply plus one death proof up to a maximum of five to self and all eternal allies. So by removing the death proof off of the Infinity Watch team, uh, they no longer will get the drain, which is provided by Phyla's passive. Both of these characters have a call out to death proof and doing this, kind of making them a, a counter. That, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to sell us a counter to Infinity Watch for Arena. On turn if Akaris is an ally heal self for 50 percent of this character's max health both of the kits have that on each of them gain 30 percent max health and so does he uh he gets it also gain 50 percent bonus he gets that also in arena or dark dimension basically get 50 percent damage because they're gonna be a duo kind of like long shot and shatterstar they're gonna be played together let's go and look at her uh ultimate which is bonkers 4-4 Clear neg three negative effects from self and all allies in arena or dark dimension. Instead, flip three negative effects into positive effects on self and all allies. So I, I don't know how that's, that's not going to be helpful too much if they got safeguard, but still it's a very powerful mechanic. Tack all enemies for 450% damage. Karis is an ally. Reduce speed bar for all enemies by 25%, which is bonkers if you think about how good the ultimate is on uh like shang chi i, I guess uh, namor has something like this but this is kind of amazing if cars ally reduce speed bar for all enemies by 25 percent that's really really good apply speed up for two turns and regeneration to self and an ally cars in arena generate two ability energy for self and ally cars i'm not sure how that's gonna work because i think in the footage uh a cars went first so that might be good. I have to see. I have to look at the footage a little closer. But uh, of course, I just want to play them. And then we'll finally get that. In Arena, apply top for two turns. To enemy support with the lowest speed. Ooh, Moon Dragon. Dormammu. Just saying. All right. Let's go to the special. 3-5. Apply stun to primary target. Call two random allies to attack the primary target. Called allies gain 50% damage. Bury yourself. And Icarus ally for 30% of the max health. And in arena, do that to everybody on the team. Very good. And these basic attacks right here are bonkers. Again, uh, I wish we would have the information on what the assist to counter attack looks like. Because sometimes that's different than the basic attack. And unfortunately, that this information is not even provided in game. We'll just have to wait for it to be available on uh, patch day. Which they announced is going to be on the 3rd. So on Wednesday will be the patch day. Uh, and then we can go to MSFGG and look at, um, uh, we can look at the assist counter. Now, I, before I move on, I want to say Cersei, they were saying uh, that the, in the, the strike time video, he was saying fortifier and healer and Akaris, they were saying striker or skirmisher. 
there's so many assists on these teams assists I, I kind of want to jump in and, and do a skirmisher striker combo whenever I see that because they have that even right here on this right here. Copy two random positive effects, excluding taunt on primary target itself. And my understanding, and I could be wrong on this, is that safeguard cannot be copied. So we'll have to see if that is true or not. But I, my understanding is that safeguard can't be copied. Tag primary target for 350% damage. If cars ally, flip two random positive effects to negative effects on primary target. Boy, this is like a super uh icarus okay icarus icarus i don't know uh so super silver surfer basic boy we remember how blown away we were with silver surfer and his basic attack boy look at this this is like a a wall of text on a bis on a basic attack apply assist now to ally icarus icarus arena or dark dimension instead copy all positive effects including taunt from target to self in arena or dark dimension if icarus icarus Circus is an ally. Flip all positive effects of primary target negative effects. When forced to attack an ally, this these least damage to eternal allies. Eternal characters, which is also kind of a call out right there to Moon Dragon's basic attack. My good! Icarus! All right, Icarus. I'll get it right someday. Icarus? I don't know. Icarus. Icarus. Hero, Cosmic, Mystic, Blaster, Eternal. By the third video of talking about these guys, I'll probably have it right then. You just wait. Maybe make a drinking game. I don't know how many times they say the name wrong. I don't know. Let's go to the passive first. <laughs> if this character's health is full at the start of the match, so they both have this. On spawn, apply offense up for two turns in self and all eternal allies. She has defense up. In arena or dark dimension, apply offense up for the entire team. So basically this duo will on arena will provide offense up and defense up for the entire team this is an arena team or dark dimension on turn if not stunned clear ability block this this passive is bonkers clear ability block at one random negative effect from self Cersei allies and the most injured ally wow on turn if not stunned gain defense up for two turns speed up then choose one random enemy that has death proof again it's kind of an anti-phyla, anti-infinity watch right here. Clear that death proof of the enemy, then apply one death proof up to a maximum of five to self and all eternal allies. And then they both have this for each other. On turn, heal self for 15% if they have the ally of the combo working. Gain each other. They get armor and they give it to each other. Gain resistance and they give it to each other. And then give each other a lot of damage. 50% damage. All right, boy. Let's talk about this ultimate ability again. Bonkers good. Energy cost 5-5. Five, five. Attack all enemies for 400% damage. Unkill. Repeat this attack. So this is going to work uh, kind of like um, Yellow Jacket. It only tr it can only go off twice. It can't go off it, like three times, nine times. It can only go off twice. If there's a kill, it goes a second time. Now, this is interesting. So they, they did make a reference to this, that this will actually happen before if she's an ally. Flip all positive effects to negative effects on each enemy, gain 500% extra focus, and then if she's an ally, attack all enemies for damage and piercing and reduce speed bar for another 25%. Wow. Unkill, attack all enemies. Wow. Tax can't be dodged or blocked. Wow. Oh, I don't know how this is going to play out. I got to I got to say I, I want to just pause for a second and we're continue reading this kid, of course. Um part of me is not really thrilled about this arena thing. I, I don't really like this, but part of me also is a little bit disappointed that, you know, the investment that that some people have made into Infinity Watch is going to be probably minimized by this, but part of me also really hates Infinity Watch uh mirror match. I don't like it. It's just not my thing. But here's the problem I have with this is that they're they're making a focus on arena. Can you can you fix? They think it's not a problem. The slingshot slingshot is garbage. If we're gonna get excited about arena, fix the slingshot. There already is a system that you tried to copy in Star Wars: Galaxy of Heroes. Just copy their arena and use that instead of this garbage system that you have here. Slingshot is trash. You want us to care about arena, it can't have this slingshot garbage. It's absolutely trash. Anyways, I, I am hopeful that we can get away from mirror matches. 
Although there's going to be a possibility where they're just creating a new mirror match. Uh, who knows what the, the the optimal defensive and optimal offense team. I suspect that eventually that'll include Dormammu, right? I, I, I suspect it's going to be Dormammu. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the footage they showed Silver Surfer, Cloak Dagger, and these two. I wonder how Deathpool, because Deathpool gives Mystic Drain. Fine. Let's keep going. Uh, the special energy cost 4-4. Four, four. Tag primary target for, or I wonder if Mega Red would play in there well. I imagine him being applied trauma on his special is pretty good. Tag primary target for 420% damage. Clear death proof. Gain a lot of extra focus. Attack all adjacent enemies. On target block. Bonus attack primary adjacent targets for 290% piercing. Maximum of two bonus attacks. So this is kind of like X23. X23 has a thing like this, right? And imagine a character that have a lot of block blocks on it, like uh, Captain America Sam Wilson, right? Wouldn't this just be like, uh, will this turn into a triple attack? Apply two death breath to this character and a random Cersei ally. Getting an assist from random Cersei ally. Getting an assist from random ally. Again, I'm wondering with seeing all those assists based on the way that the basic counter attack, uh, the counter assist mechanic will be when we get to see that information on Wednesday. Uh, if we're going to actually be using skirmisher striker combos. Uh, basic comic burst. Attack primary target for 280% piercing. Cersei and ally bonus attack two times. This is someone was making a point that this is actually like better than a Wolverine over ultimate if you think about it. If an ally Cersei, I don't know if that's true or not, but it seems like a triple attack for all that piercing. If an ally Cersei has 50% max health or greater, apply offense up for two turns to that Cersei. If an ally is below 50% max health, apply two to regeneration to that Cersei. Apply assist now to random Cersei. When forced to attack an ally, this is less damage from a character. Okay. It looks like not trash as far as the kits. The kits look like they're going to be powerful. Um, you know, they suggested in the strike time video that they're going to be helpful, not only in completing Dark Dimension 1 through 4, but I don't know how he worded it, but he kind of made it sound like it was going to, they were going to be a good fit for Dark Dimension 5. I think they said that for Pym Tech 2, so I want to see how that plays out. But it, it just looks like this is an anti-Infinity Watch team at a minimum for Arena. And um, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad. And I'm guessing that this will definitely play well when we people finally get Dormammu whenever the six months from now. Um, I wonder if Omega Red or Deathpool or Cloak or Dagger, any of those teams, we'll have to see. All right, we have some information here on, uh, which we've already covered uh, for the Omega Red event, which is going to be happening on Monday. Here are the requirements for tier sevens. You know, which is basically to unlock a six star, you're going to have to have gear tier 13, ISO 4, as well as have all the character requirements at six stars and gear tier the seven to get a seven star mega red, gear tier 14 on, you know, Winter Soldier, which is trash. I, this really breaks my heart that if you want to get a seven yellow, a mega red, basically you have to take uh, your Winter Soldier to gear tier 14, ISO level five. That's fine. K care, and then character availability updates. So, um, there's going to be some, do they talk about this? They, they're going to have double drops uh, for Captain Sam on Sunday. And also, I believe, Winter Soldier on Sunday the 31st. And then also again on the 5th. That'll be covered here in a little bit. We're going to go down. Character availability. Bolster your settle ends. Here's for our new warriors, uh, which is going to happen on November 3rd, which is Wednesday, which is going to be patch day. Patch day is always fun here on Twitch. Come hang out with me. White Tiger will be 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 coming out of being a, a Blitz Orb exclusive, and she'll be moving to the Blitz Store. And then Misty Knight will become the exclusive, you know, Blitz Orb character, which has the 10% drop rate. And then uh, Cloak will be in the Elite Store. Blitz is coming up. She Hulk and uh, Minerva. And it's interesting, isn't uh, isn't the same actress play that plays Cersei? Is the one that plays Minerva and you know they they repurp I guess they did that with Thanos and Cable, but anyhow yeah it's the it would get Gemma Chan anyways. A Minerva Blitz a bonus and flash events okay, uh, prep for the Mega Red well, we just mentioned this dual threats double drops for Winter Soldier and Secret Avengers which is just Captain America Sam Wilson which will be on October 31st which is Sunday and then again later on the week. So Sunday, we'll have double drops on Captain Sam and then towards the end of the Mega Red event, which will be on the 5th. So there you go. 
Uh, and then also we're going to have block party next, next Friday. I believe tonight is the payday event. And then you'll have double drops for that. And then we'll also have, uh, the boot camp event, which is the training modules for skill military. What do you think? Are you worried about, are you worried about this team and being in arena? I don't know. I want to see, I'm, it's, I think it's too early to tell. I can't, I I'm, I'm concerned in, in a little bit, dis but not. And a little bit disappointed, but I, I want to say that I'm not surprised by all of this. And hopefully they're not bugged out. I mean, with these super complicated kits, I hope they're not buggy. We will find out next week. Uh, I expect one of them to be available, uh, like in in for in in packs, probably on patch day, which will be the third. And then we, and then the, and you know how one of them will release is to be discovered. Uh, but one of them is going to be an event campaign character would be my best guess and who knows on 13s as soon as i find out about the 13s i'll put it in a video make a post all right guys thanks for watching keep on giving <laughs>